Hi everyone, today I'm going to compare and contrast SQL Server and Couchbase Server within an ASP.NET web application. The example code in this video shows an either or situation. It's either all SQL or it's all Couchbase. But in real projects, SQL and Couchbase can work side by side. You can use or keep SQL as your system of record while still benefiting from Couchbase by using it as a system of engagement. And Couchbase can be used as a system of record too, but it might make more sense to your project to maybe keep SQL, deal with that flat rigid data, keep the existing integrations that you have, and then use Couchbase when it makes sense for other parts of the system. As a cache, session provider, profile storage, full text search, or other places where you need schema flexibility, scaling flexibility, etc. But in this session, to keep things simple, it's going to be an either or, all Couchbase, or all SQL Server. Switching to the browser, let's take a look at the ASP.NET site I've created for this demo. This demo application has two features, a shopping cart. If we click on shopping cart here, we are going to get a list of all the shopping carts. I don't have any yet, so I'll go ahead and create a new shopping cart. We can view those carts, we can add items to the carts there. Just add one item to this cart, and we'll go back to the list and we can add another shopping cart and we can actually search for shopping carts as well by the username of the shopping cart we get the result there and then the other part of this is social media so we can go to here social media and this is kind of based on Twitter sort of thing so we can create a new user that has their own updates so this is Adrian we will say hello world send an update go back here and we can see two updates we can add more users uh, the other thing we can do is we can also add friends. So I'll go to Wendy here and I'll add Adrian as her friend. And then I'll go into Adrian and add Wendy here as her friend. So now they're friends with each other. If you're like me, then you've already pictured the relational schema for this database. This is a screenshot from SQL Server Management Studio that shows the tables being used by this application. There's a shopping cart table and a shopping cart items table, and there's a one-to-end relationship between them. For social media, there's a user table, a many-to-many -many table to represent friends, and an updates table with a one-to-end relationship to users. Now in Couchbase, we could represent the data in a similar way if we wanted to, using five different document types. But this doesn't really take advantage of the full capabilities of a JSON model. Here's a screenshot from a data modeling tool called Hackalade. There's no schema defined in Couchbase itself because Couchbase does not enforce schema, but it's still useful to create and define a schema even if you expect to change it later. So instead of five tables, I have three document types. The shopping cart and shopping cart items collapse into one document. The items are stored in an array within the shopping cart. And there's no longer a need for an ID field because it's no longer foreign. It's a domestic array. Also notice that I've added a type field to the document that will indicate that it's a shopping cart document. The type field is arbitrary and not enforced by Couchbase, but again, useful. For social media, I've decided to keep updates as separate documents because I anticipate the number of updates being large. And each update points to the user who made the update via the user ID. Hackalade calls this an FK, a foreign key, and it might be useful to think of it that way but just keep in mind that is not enforced by Couchbase in the same way that a foreign key in a relational database is. But I have collapsed the friends data into an array within the user document. And again, I've added type fields to these documents. This is not required. There are other ways to achieve similar results. It's just the way I've decided to do it. So let's go through a quick little exercise here to show sort of the translation that I went through here. You can understand my thought process. So I'm starting with the SQL schema at the top left and I want to end up with the Couchbase oriented schema at the bottom right. So we'll start by taking shopping cart items and moving that into shopping cart itself. So now it's a part of shopping cart. It is all a single thing instead of two separate tables. And after I move those items over there, I don't need the foreign key anymore of shopping cart ID because it is part of shopping cart. And I didn't need this in the first place really, but I also don't need to continue to have a primary key for the shopping cart items. And then over at the social media portion, I've taken the friends many-to-many -many mapping and I've moved that over into friend book users. So now they're part of the same document, the same piece of data. 
And because of that, I no longer need the user ID as a foreign key because it has become domestic. And now I can remove that shopping cart items from my model because it's no longer its separate thing. It's now part of shopping cart. And the same goes for that friends collection over there. So now you can see that I've gone from five tables to three uh, different document types there in SQL. And they roughly match the couch base mapping there on the bottom right. Except one thing I didn't add is type fields. And you don't need these in SQL Server because SQL Server has tables to divide up the pieces of data. But with documents, you have to add something to make those separate from each other. So I've added uh, a type field there. So type is going to equal shopping cart, type is going to equal user, and type is going to equal update. So now I'm going to switch over to Visual Studio and show you how I've implemented this system. And my solution has five projects. So we'll start with the web one here. This is an ASP.NET MVC UI. It's basically just a front end to interact with the uh, database. It has some very light business logic in there. Then look at the core project. This contains the C Sharp classes that correspond to the data models I just showed you. So item and shopping cart, friend book user and update. Those are the models that we're going to use in both SQL and Couchbase. It's the same classes there. It also consists of interfaces that have the methods that the web project's going to need to interact with the data. So a repository for the shopping cart, a repository for social media. Let's look now at SQL Server Data Access. This contains SQL implementations of the interfaces. So I have a SQL shopping cart repository and a SQL social media repository. I've decided to use Entity Framework. So this project also contains these mappings in addition to the repository. And it also contains all the DDL files that you need to create this schema in SQL Server. So you can see the five different, oh, I'm sorry, six different scripts there uh, that you need to create the schema. Now over in the Couchbase Server Data Access project, this contains the Couchbase implementation of those interfaces. So Couchbase Shopping Cart Repository and Couchbase Social Media Repository. There is no impedance mismatch, so I don't need an ORM like Entity Framework here. I have elected to include the link to Couchbase link provider, which gives me the ability to generate SQL queries for Couchbase in the same way that Entity Framework does for SQL Server. So I have these two projects. They both implement those interfaces. And the way I switch between them in these projects is by changing this web config file. So in here, I have a setting that is called which database, and it can either be set to SQL Server or Couchbase Server. And you can see that I'm in Couchbase Server mode right now. And then in the controllers, I have an if statement right here, and that will instantiate the correct repository based on the web config setting. But of course, it's using the interface here in any case. And I already showed you this app in Couchbase mode, so now I'm going to switch over to uh, SQL Server mode. And we'll bring this up in the web browser again. And the data that I created already in Couchbase is going to not be here because I switched to a whole different database. So we have shopping carts. I go there and I get a list of all the shopping carts there. I can view shopping carts, I can add another item to them, the shopping carts, and I can also search. So let's search for this user, if I can copy and paste, search for that user, shows up there, click on that, get to the shopping carts. Okay, so same functionality as before. I'll go over to social media, and we'll also get a list of the latest messages that have been posted to social media. I can create new users and updates, and I'll add one here, another update there, and I can also add friends. So if I want to add, let's say I want to add Tyree here as a friend of Genevieve, add them as friends, and I can do the same thing on Tyree's account, add her as a friend there to Tyree. So let's take a look at some of the code. We'll start with SQL Server. We'll look at the SQL Server data access project here, and we'll look at, let's just look at the shopping cart repository to start with. So let's take a quick peek here at this 
interface, you can see I Shopping Cart Repository has five methods, and those are the methods that the web project will need to implement all the features that I just mentioned uh, going through the web application. So let's look at the implementation here. I'm starting by instantiating this SQL to CB context. This is an entity framework implementation here, so let's go take a look at that. And it's I'm not much of an entity framework expert, so this is a very basic implementation. There's lots of different ways to use entity framework. I'm just uh, implementing this DB context base class, connecting it to SQL Server, and I am creating these four DB sets that correspond to those four entities that I mentioned, the updates, the users, the carts, and the items, and then adding all the maps for those um, here in the configuration. Just take a quick look at one of the maps. You can see I have to say, okay, this has the primary key. This is the table it corresponds to. I'm going to map a property to here. I'm going to map a many-to-many -many relationship to the friends there with this has many. You can also look at the shopping cart since that's what we're focusing on. You can see that same sort of thing here. Specify a primary key, specify a table, specify the two properties, user and date created. And then it has this items collection. And that's going to live in a separate table in SQL Server. So it has to be mapped here with Entity Framework to the items via this foreign key. And also note that I'm ignoring this type field. I'm using the same shopping cart class for both Couchbase and SQL implementations. SQL Server does not need the type field. so. I'm just telling Entity Framework to ignore that field. Okay, so we've looked at uh, Entity Framework. Now we have this Entity Framework context. And let's look at one of the first methods in the repository to get a single cart by its ID. And you can ignore these green squiggles. It's basically just ReSharper telling me that it could simplify this, but ignore those. And we're just getting a single item out of the shopping cart. So. With Entity Framework, it's always generating SQL. You're always having to use SQL, even if it's just one item, to, to query something out because we need to join together an item from one table and potentially multiple items from another table. So I'm just saying shopping carts from the context. I want to include the items, so I want to eager load all the items in the shopping cart because I want to get the entire collection. And then just limit this to just the one that matches by ID. And because we're going to ID, we can say, okay, give me the single a shopping cart from that example. This is going to generate some SQL behind the scenes, execute that against SQL Server, and eventually pull back a single C sharp object of type shopping cart. We'll go down to the next one here, get latest, 10 latest shopping carts. It's a very similar thing. We start with context shopping carts. We want to eager load the items. I'm going to order them now by one of the fields in shopping carts the day created. Take the 10 top results there. Those are going to be the latest ones and make those two lists. That's going to give me a list of shopping cart classes. And again, it's going to generate SQL behind the scenes to do all this, do all the joins, the ordering, and the top keyword, I assume, will be generated there. Next up is seed empty shopping cart. So I've just created a method here to create a random shopping cart with some realistic looking data in it. I'm going to instantiate a new shopping cart object with a GUID as the primary key. I'm using a library called Faker to generate realistic looking names. I'm going to take a first initial and a last name so it'll look like M Groves, and you already saw that in the web app. And then now as the date created. In Entity Framework, I add this to the shopping carts DB set. And then once I am ready to commit changes, I go ahead and call the save changes method. So this will create a new shopping cart and add it to Entity Framework. And once I have a cart, I probably want to start adding items to it. So in this method, I'm passing in the cart ID and the actual item being added. So that's going to be newed up somewhere in the web UI, I imagine. We're going to go ahead and find that cart based on its ID. So I'm going to call the method we saw earlier. I'm going to make sure that the items array is not a null and add a new item to that array. And then again, call Entity Framework to save changes. So that's all pretty standard stuff, pretty basic use of Entity Framework there. One thing I want to uh, also cover is store procedures, aka sprocks. So I've created a sprock to do the searching of the shopping cart. So when we put the user's name into the search box and hit search, that's actually going to call a store procedure. And this is how I figured out how to call a store procedure via Entity Framework. I don't know if this is the best way or not, but this is the way I've been doing it. Uh, this gives you the benefits of returning the results to C-sharp classes. 
I could call a store procedure directly with ADO.net, but then I'd have to do the, all the mapping myself manually. So this is a little extra work maybe for Entity Framework, but it's worth it because I'll get the shopping carts uh, as, as the search result there. Now the benefits of store procedure, I'm not a huge fan of store procedures, but there are some benefits. So one is reusability. If you have multiple applications, they can all use the same sort of procedures and that way they can get some reusability out of them. And the other benefit is abstraction. So the details of the implementation can be changed without having to affect the web application directly itself. So you can see just as an example, this Brock here, it's a very, very naive search. It's just using the like keyword. And I may want to replace this at some point with a more robust search, full text search, etc. And I could do that, make a change to this proc without having to affect any of the C sharp code. Okay, so let's go over to the Couchbase implementation now and see how it compares to the SQL Server Entity Framework implementation. We'll again look at the shopping cart repository. Now, in the constructor here, I am using the Couchbase.NET SDK to get access to this bucket object. A Couchbase bucket is just a collection of documents, and I've called it SQL2 CB. And so that is a bucket from the .NET SDK. I've also elected to use the link to Couchbase provider here, and that's how I get the bucket context. I pass in the bucket to it and get a bucket context, and you can see that being used later. And the other thing I want to mention is this base URL. Uh, more on what I'm doing with that later, but this code here is just getting the URL of the current ASP.NET site. And I wouldn't recommend you do this, especially in a repository project that is not uh, part of the web application but it makes my demo easier, and so you'll see what I'm doing with that later. Now down to the get by ID. You can see here that I just want to get a single shopping cart out of the database, and there is no impedance mismatch going on here. I don't need to use Entity Framework or anything like that. I can just say bucket.get and pass in the ID, which I'm still using GUIDs here in Couchbase. It's going to map that to a shopping cart class, and return that from the method. And this is how the NoSQL buzzword sort of started, is that I'm getting documents out of the database. I can also put documents in the database. And I'm not using a SQL query to do that. I'm using separate operations, get, set, update, upsert, and so on. Now, we can't always get away with using only key-based operations. This is why Couchbase has added SQL, SQL for JSON, which we call nickel and one QL. And this is where that type field comes into play. So I'm executing a query here. Select the ID and the actual value of the document from that SQL to CB bucket and give me only the documents that have type equal to shopping cart. So this gives me a way to differentiate documents between each other by using that type field. Order them by the date descending, just like we did in SQL, and limit them to 10. And then once I have that string, I'll pass it off to the .NET, Couchbase.NET SDK, and get the results back as a collection of shopping cart objects. So Couchbase.NET SDK executes the query and returns the results. Now, instead, I could use the link to Couchbase provider, which I mentioned earlier. So let's comment out this part and show you how it might be done in link to Couchbase. So link to Couchbase, like Entity Framework, is going to generate the nickel behind the scenes for you. So it's going to look very much like writing your link queries for Entity Framework. You're going to be querying off of this context.query of type shopping cart. And then I specified here where type equals shopping cart. Now I'm doing that here to be explicit. Actually, you could use a document filter attribute on the shopping cart class instead of using this where. So this where, you wouldn't have to add a where for every single link query that you write. I'm going to order it by the date descending, select the cart, and this is a little different because I'm selecting into a new anonymous object instead of um, just the list of fields being projected. And then I'll take the latest 10 of the top 10, and make that to a list. I've got to do a little extra work here because of the way link works. And then I return the results as a list of shopping carts. Let's look down here at seed empty shopping cart. So this is just creating a new shopping cart in the database. So very much like the SQL Server example, I'm just creating a new GUID as the ID. The content is, is different though, because it is not a, a, a series of flat objects that need to be mapped into different tables, but it is one object that'll be serialized into JSON 
and store it in a document. So I'm again using Faker here to create a fake looking name like M Groves and uh, date time now is a timestamp and type equals shopping cart so I'm specifying that type value there and then items will be in this document itself and I'm just going to create as an empty list for now. So when you start out you'll see a JSON document that has a user field, a date created field, a type field, and an items field which is an empty array. So if I want to start adding items to that array I would have to normally pull the document down, add items to the array, and then save the document. But one thing you might be wondering about is that instead of dealing with a bunch of rows that are in a separate table, we're dealing with one big document. And as that document gets bigger, that could take longer to send over a network just to make one change. But Couchbase has what's called a sub-document API to deal with this. You can choose to select or mutate just a part of the document without sending the whole thing over the wire. So in this case, I'm going to mutate shopping cart documents based on this ID. I want to take this field in those documents, in that document. It's called items. I'm going to append an item to it. And when I do this, only the item is being passed over the wire, not the entire document. Finally, let's look at this example here. So this is where, in the SQL Server example, I was using a Sprock. Now, Couchbase does not have Sprocks available. So what we can do instead to get the same benefits of a Sprock is we can move that logic up the stack, out of the database, into a web service. And so we get the benefits of reusability still. Multiple applications can call that service. And we also get the benefits of abstraction because those details of the implementation can be changed. Now I'm working on an ASP.NET application right now. And for convenience, I'm just calling an endpoint within my own application. But I could create a separate ASP.NET service implement the logic there, and then call that service from one or more applications. So in this case, I'm just using REST Sharp to make a request to that base URL at this endpoint with the search string and get the results back to a list of shopping carts. And you can see the actual implementation of that here in the service is, again, a very naive approach using a nickel, using SQL and a like statement to get the search string. And if I wanted to improve this, I could change it to use full text search. And that would be an implementation detail that the service calling that would not need to be aware of. So that's it for this video. You can find the source code for the video at this URL here. And you can also learn more about SQL Server and Couchbase in a three-part series of blog posts I wrote at blog.couchbase.com starting at the address there on the bottom. Thanks very much for watching.